Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. We are back with the Ted Show. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. That's why I have some green on today. Um, I hope you have a very great and fun and safe St. Patrick's Day, whatever you're doing. Always excited to have the one and only most amazing professor ever, Dr. Michael B. Timmons on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about aquaponics 101, uh, lettuce today. Let us, yes, let us explain it to you. I hope you guys enjoyed all of those dad jokes. I put, uh, we're going to talk about, and, and you guys were so responsive. I want to tell the audience really quick, Mike, thank you for the response. I got so many questions about uh, aquaponics and fish and what does that even mean and how is that going to help? And so uh, thank you guys for the sh for giving us feedback on the show. And uh, you asked what was coming up. Mike's going to be giving us insider information on how we grow our vegetables, what we grow, how the whole system works. Um, so with that, we, and there he goes. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what I love about live. Anyway, so with that introduction, he obviously left. And uh, But it is Professor Dr. Michael T. Mike Timmons. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How you doing? Well, well happy St. Patrick's Day, and uh, I'm colorblind. Is this if I got my green shirt on or am I? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love it. All right, so tell me, tell them a little bit about you, Mike, before we take a deep dive. Um, I put your websites up there. Let's hope I got them correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, if not, you can always go to tedscommunity.com and find uh, information about Mike, or you can reach out to me. So tell them a little bit about you before we take a deep dive into Aquaponics 101. I'm a really shy person. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me out of my shell. You know, <laughs> professors. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a recently retired professor from Cornell University. And you know what to say about a man from Cornell. You can always tell a man from Cornell, but you can't tell him very much. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Cornell is such a wonderful, esteemed university. So well, tell us what the back, tell us what your background is. Have you always been in um, nature sciences? I know it's got a real name, but uh, fish and aquaponics, or is that something that you kind of developed into over time? Well, I grew up on a farm in Ohio, and I graduated from Ohio State University. The Ohio State, if my fans tell me correctly. Well, uh, interestingly enough, when I graduated, it was still Ohio State University. <laughs> and you should have said... When I graduated in Ohio, it had just become a state, and that's what I usually get. I get it, Mike. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. So it, it actually became the Ohio State University, and the I graduated in 1971 for my bachelor's, went to University of Hawaii for my master's, and I got a PhD from Cornell in 1978. Um, but Ohio State became the Ohio State University because of football, and the football players would get on TV, and they go, and I'm from the Ohio State University. <laughs> and that's how it became the, the Ohio State. State. But I've always been in agriculture, Ted. I, I love growing things. You know, I, I, well, I was always good in science and math. I'm, in, I'm an engineer. I'm actually a registered engineer in the state of Florida. And for many years, I would come down to Florida during the winter time because it's minus 80 degrees in upstate New York. Okay. <laughs> Too cold for me. Oh, you know, and so I would teach a uh, short course on recirculating aquaculture at the Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute in Fort Pierce. And I did that for many years. So I have quite a close relationship with many of the scientists there. And then um, all, of night, all of 2020, I was on leave from Cornell University and I used that opportunity to do academic things, of course. But I also started a business in Vero Beach called Atlantic Pacific Jade LLC. And that is a aquaponics farm, which, what's aquaponics? Oh, yeah, we'll get that out later. Okay. 
that I <laughs> produce tilapia uh, genetics. I have a big genetics operation. And then we have about, uh, we will soon, we're building it right now, 8,000 square feet of greenhouse space wow. where, where we grow vegetables organically. And the really cool thing, Ted, you know what it is? I want to know. We have a zero carbon footprint. That's In big. Fact, that's a big deal. Explain to people, that's such a buzzword that you hear. Mike, what does it mean to have zero carbon footprint? Oh, you know, I asked the same I, I, I was confused. You know, I'm a professor. I'm supposed to be smart, right? <laughs> so I would, and I was always, I was like, carbon footprint. What? I'm thinking like uh, Bigfoot or something you now. <laughs> so what's carbon footprint? I kept asking. So I have a I have a guy I swam with every day at lunch for 38 years, and I finally said his name's Doug. Doug, what's this carbon footprint? I just don't get it. You know, and he goes, Oh, it's it's the when you have a process, whatever that is. What is the left behind carbon dioxide? from the process, like combustion engine. What is the leftover carbon dioxide? So leftover, how do you tell Bigfoot went by? His footprint, so that's a carbon footprint. I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it. I think that people use that and most of us just nod and we go, I think that that's a good thing, but I don't understand exactly what it means. So thank yeah. you for explaining it. Now here's here's an interesting thing too. When you burn wood, it has zero carbon footprint. Went, How can that be? There's all this carbon dioxide coming up. Huh? You know the answer to that one? <laughs> no, I don't. Tell me. I was very curious and it made no sense to me. I because obviously all this carbon dioxide is going up. Well, the logic of the scientists, remember, we always have to follow the science, right? <laughs> Get me going on that one. <laughs> the science always, you remember the science used to say, if you went so far, you'd fall off the edge of the earth, right? Because it's flat. <laughs> that is the science. So, okay. Why does burning wood have a zero carbon footprint? Tell it's us. Because that carbon in the tree was sequestered from the atmosphere and it was stored there for you know x amount of years okay and then you just put it back okay so now you go oh yeah that kind of makes sense but well why doesn't that apply to coal or oil yeah why doesn't it yeah why did that why doesn't that apply there well because the scientists decided well that was a long long time ago <laughs> And as in, you know, thousands and maybe millions of years, but burning a tree, right, is fairly recent, like in our lifetime. So that's why it took the carbon dioxide out of the air, it sequesters it into hard fiber, and then you burn it and it releases energy and a lot of carbon dioxide. The net is zero. In a in a hundred in a hundred year time scale, it's zero. It's amazing, okay. amazing. All right, so let's get through. You have tons of props today. Yes. So let's talk about aquaponics. First of all, give us a definition of what aquaponics is, and then let's educate them. Let, let us educate them. Get it? Let us. Educate. Some people call me Dr. Prop. By the way. <laughs> That's okay. for another show, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> We have to actually back up a little bit. We have to, we have to circle back. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you front and center and let you show your props and give us a little bit of an example okay. of what First we're talking about today. The source we're going to start with hydroponics. And this is water. Okay. And we take water and we go, I see. If this was, say, the water I like to drink, like from uh, bottled water, it has almost no nutrients in it. Okay, it's just hydrogen and oxygen. It's like pure water, right? Reverse osmosis or evaporation, you get pure water. Well, the plants need nutrients, as in 
nitrogen and potassium and magnesium and selenium and molybdenum and right and just they need like about 17 or 18 macro micro they're not in there so what do you got to do hmm. i don't know what do we do oh you use inorganic chemicals see look i'm adding them to the water and the right amount, just the right amount, okay? And then... And what are those chemicals, inorganic chemicals? Yeah, they're, they're, the, the common term would be fertilizers. <laughs> I put my chemicals in here. Remember, I'm just a bunch of chemicals. You and I, we're just chemicals. Right? That's right. So then I stir it up. And then I solubilize them in there, right? As when they become dissolved. And then I go in, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They look pretty good. Okay, so I got them all stirred up. Actually, there's another science lesson here because I actually put too many chemicals in. I went above the solubility limit. <laughs> uh, if I keep stirring, see, I keep stirring. Can you see, see now? See? Yeah. There's like, oh, God. But I'm pretty close to the solubility limit. So now I have all those macro micronutrients that I need. And guess what? I can grow plants. Is that How can you grow plants just like that? Oh, did pretty good, right? So <laughs> we're pretending that that's lettuce, but it's actually top of a celery stock, but it's pretty good visual aid, right? And so uh, most of us think of growing our plants and vegetables in the soil. How much tat? Here's the question. How much soil is in this water tank? Zero. Yeah. So it's called soilless culture. That's hydroponics. Soilless oh, culture. Oh, very good. You're a very good student. I might, you might get an A. So far, you're at <laughs> A level here. Okay? <laughs> I'm not a C. Plus. No, no, no. You're at A. You're at A. All my students always tell them my goal is that everyone in this class gets an A. If you don't get an A, it means I didn't do my job. Because nice. You're the kind of professor people love. Yeah, I said that most students get A's in my class because I'm somewhat entertaining people. Say. <laughs> so now this is hydroponics. You got it? I love it. Hydroponics. Very good. Uh, what so what, makes, it, what makes it aquaponics? What is aquaponics? Mm. Okay. Now, those other those of you who are watching, Ted actually has a kind of a heads up on this. <laughs> Here's a fish tank, and what kind of fish is in there, Ted? It's a, it's a red snapper. Yeah, <laughs> they're so good. It's kind of round, but it is a red snapper. <laughs> and okay, now this is really good. This is going really well, I think. Okay, now <laughs> what do we do? What do the fish need all the time? uh food yes <laughs> still get my a i'm doing so, good today so guess what i am going to feed my fish look at you feeding the red snapper yeah he's not too hungry right now but... <laughs> so i actually fed him earlier so i put some fish feed into the water this is actually this is actually good it's floating fish feed uh fish feed floats sing semi sound another whole lecture i mean there's a whole chapter in my book by the way if you really want to learn about this stuff read the yellow book okay. recirculating aquaculture yeah and uh look right here really close fourth edition Good for you, Mike. That's wonderful. It's actually the sixth edition because I had to change the title because one of the authors got mad at one of the other authors and there was a big fight. And so oh, we had to start over. Do you ever have those issues? Okay. <laughs> so if you really want to get this, if you really want to learn about fish farming and all that stuff and hydroponics, it's in this book. There's only 700 pages, so you can probably read it in an afternoon. Okay. So back to... <laughs> Back to our science lesson today. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> I fed the fish. Okay. 
fed the fish, right? Now, Tap, we have to get yes, a little, I'm listening. We have to get a little graphic here, okay? Okay. You've ate a lot. You're gonna eat a whole lot today. A lot of bulky foods, maybe a little green beer, you know. So what do you what does your body do sometime later? So there's liquid things that come out, right? Some yes, say, absolutely. Some people say we don't buy beer, we just rent it. <laughs> True that. And then there's then there's this solid materials that eventually go through the whole GI system and we excrete it out of our anus. Okay. <laughs> well, we went right to anus. All right. Here you go. The anus thing. Okay. <laughs> now, okay. Here's some here's a, here's a here's some factoids here, right? While we feed the fish, only maybe 50% or so of it is actually assimilated by the body, which means the rest of it is excreted either in liquid form or in solid form or fish. They actually excrete a lot of it across their gills as ammonia right into the water column. Okay. So think about it. You feed these fish and like half or more of the nutrients end up in the water. No. Yeah. I'm, gonna give I'm you guessing that's a good thing. Well, you know, the fish are happy, but you know, if the if you don't keep this water looking like this, then the fish are not going to be very happy. And if they're not very happy, they don't do well. As in, they don't they convert less and less of that feed to body mass, and more of it becomes a waste load. Uh -huh. So we got all this waste load, right? So, oh, we're talking about aquaponics, aren't we? Yes. Okay. Now, let's go back to this, okay? And let's pretend there were no nutrients in there, okay? If I add some of my fish water over to the plant water, there's all these nutrients in there in my fish water. I add oh. them over here. Somehow I get these nutrients in here over to here. Fascinating. How do we do that? A variety of ways. I can do it like this. <laughs> I asked. So there you now, go. <laughs> well, that's, that's, as, that's how simple it is. And then once it goes over there, we bring some out of that. We just sit there and it goes around in a circle. Okay. That's called recirculating aquaculture. Okay. Very good. You know, you have, you obviously have dumbed this down enough for me to understand it. And I love it. Now here's the key. Ted. So remember when I, remember when I added all these fertilizers? Yes. That's inorganic. It's not organic produce. But when I do it from my fish, it is can, can be done organically. So I have organically produced food. But you might say, well, hey, Professor T, some people call me Professor T, some people call Dr. Dr. Prop. Okay. <laughs> is that really, really, really work? And I Aren't they missing some micronutrient, maybe, or not the right concentration? I go, good question, Ted. Really, that's a really good question. Yeah, here, here it is now. Uh, Ten years ago, I didn't believe this at all. Okay, I thought those aquaponic people—they're out to lunch. They don't know what they're talking about. That's they don't know so science. This is just all make believe. Okay, but. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to do it. Okay. I'm ready. Are you ready? I do have to add one thing. Now, watch. Okay, are you watching? I'm watching. Oh. What was that? Well, it was, a, it was an Eminem. It was actually an Eminem. But it makes a great prop because it's green. You see it down here? Yes. Okay, that is a representation of chelated iron chelated 
iron. Yeah, now we all know about iron in the water, right? It turns our pipes red, our toilet, it turns everything red, right? Yes. Well, iron comes in many, many forms, and most of them are not available to the fish. They just like to deposit themselves places where we don't like them, like in our bathtub and things like that, right? So fish have the same problem, so they have trouble getting that iron into their bodies, which is needed for basic cell processes. So they put a chelator around the iron molecule, which is really this is actually a protein, and then that that pill can be absorbed by the fish or us, right? And then that breaks down in the bloodstream in the digestive process, and that iron then is released into an available form. So that's what the chelator. The chelator helps that process to be efficient. And we don't lose any. Now, here's the really, 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 really cool thing. The chelated iron comes in a, in a form, it's concreted in a form that the organic um, controlling agency for the United States called OMRI, O-M-R-I, Organic Whatever Research Institute, they have certified certain chelated iron products as organic. So I can take an organically approved chelated iron, drop it into my water for the plants, and I, I, I couldn't believe it. Okay, I, I can't believe either. It. I, can't either. I ran controlled research like scientists do, and I compared hydroponic lettuce to aquaponic lettuce. Guess what? What? The scientists like to say the hypothesis was you ever heard that one right hypothesis right i the forgot that word the hypothesis i think this i think the world is flat okay so you set up that's your hypothesis the world is flat okay so then you set up a set of experiments to determine whether or not you can reject that hypothesis okay if you can't reject it you guys like well it could be true okay you don't know it's true but you can't reject that it's true Okay, so I ran all this science, controlled experiments, replications, like a, like a scientist would do, and the hypothesis is there is no uh, the production performance characteristics of hydroponic lattice and aquaponic lattice are the same, and as a scientist, I cannot reject that hypothesis. We never prove anything. You know, we never, scientists so, never prove it. Let me ask you something. I, we obviously have deep dives to take, and we're going to be doing that every week. Um, but before we head out, of course, we're over, but I knew we would be, so it's totally yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you just give them a quick synopsis, and then I promise the audience that we'll take a deeper dive next week. This is all great, Mike, but how does this help with sustainability, and uh, how does this help with neighborhoods and how does this help us from a agricultural feeding our people uh, perspective? Well, I'll give the short answer. One is that our farm that we're going to be supplying veggies and fish, you know, to Orlando. Okay, we do that on a farm that's a zero carbon footprint. Okay, and all these nutrients that normally the fish expel we go off into the canal. All canals lead to the ocean. There's those signs all over the place. We don't do that. There's no discharge. There's no discharge of nutrients from the way we produce veggies and fish. That's the cool thing. So we we are completely sustainable. We got to figure out how we're going to feed another two billion people in the next thirty years. We can't continue to do conventional agriculture. We do not have the resources to do it. Our our receiving aquifers, our oceans, our lakes, our streams, our rivers, they can't accept these loads. It, it destroys them ecologically. So the only way we're going to survive is to produce food sustainably. Love it. All right. So we're going to take a deeper dive every week with Mike. If you guys have questions for Professor T, uh, reach out to him, reach out to me. I'll get the questions on air. I love this topic and discussion. There is so much more we're going to take uh, a closer look at over the next couple of weeks, months, however long we go on, because I think Mike could educate us for years. Uh, what's the best way for them to reach out to you in between shows, Mike? Email, Amazon, 
Mike, beers and beautiful, tears and talented, three at cornell.edu. Uh, you Cornell. know, I have to admit that I was not quite awake because 10 o'clock is usually earlier than I like to do a show, and I am wide awake now and uh, smiling and laughing. That was so educational and yet so good and I say dumbed down, but I love the fact that you made it so that we could understand it. And so we're going to do that every week. Thank you, Professor Dr. Michael B. Timmons. You guys, if you have questions for us, want to know anything about what we talked about today, uh, please reach out to me and Mike, or I'll get you in touch with Mike. Thank you, my friend. We'll see you next week. Y'all have a good one. Bye, everybody.